Everybody's at Go Land here. I'll be your Extendly coach for today. We, my friends, today are going to go through how to set up email and SMS strip sequences in high level. It's going to be pretty exciting. I'm glad it's a Monday. Glad I get to take you guys through some of this stuff. It's going to be fun. So today, what we're going to learn is what does it mean for an email or SMS to drip? Bunch of marketers in this community, we all use that phrase a lot. <laughs> Sometimes it gets bent to mean all kinds of things. So um, I'm just going to tell you guys what I think it means and hopefully uh, help you get rid of any confusion regarding that word drip. We're going to talk about configuring weight events and workflows to drip and what that means. We're going to talk about how to use the contacts view to create smart filters and drip. Uh, those contacts and the workflows. And then we're also going to discuss the impact to uh, the internal team that the, either the business team or the agency team when drips um, are staggered versus consolidated. So first, quickly, let's get into what does drip mean? So I'm just going to read this off here. This is kind of my definition, but so in marketing, a drip campaign refers to a series of automated Pre-written messages, usually, usually email or SMS, that are sent to a customer or prospect over a period of time. The idea is to gradually drip, kind of like raindrops, right, through like a drainage pipe, <laughs> to drip information, promotions, or other content to the recipient in a way that keeps them engaged, interested, and uh, you know ultimately pushes them towards the ultimate goal of converting them into a paying customer. So that is essentially what drip means. So let me back out of the presentation. We'll go back here and we'll just go through this list one by one here. And so let's talk about um, configuring weight events to drip. So we're going to go over to high level here. And we're just in a blank workflow here and we'll just call this workflow drip example. Okay, so when you set up weight events to drip, first of all, you can have drips that are various different time frequencies or time cadences. And so, you know, a lot of times, um, kind of like a, depending on how aggressive somebody wants to be with a drip, they might do as much as like three times a week. Um, probably the average is one time a week. And on the other side of the spectrum, the lower end average is like one time per month. So let's just say we're going to do sort of like the probably most common standard of once per week. And so what we would do in our actions and the workflows, we would just select wait. Now, the very first time that they get into the workflow, you might want them to get that message right away. But then after that, let's say that you want to wait, you know, seven days till the next one. And so let's say we have like, let's say this is an SMS strip. So this is SMS one, and we'll just put some placeholder content. Then they're going to get wait seven days, and then they're going to get SMS two. And then let's just do one more seven day wait. In fact, what we can do is just duplicate this down here, and then we'll just do our third SMS down here at the bottom. So we have a three-part SMS drip series now, and we'll go ahead and save our workflow. Now, if I go back to the presentation here, we, we can see that the next thing I'm going to show you guys what uh, how to do is uh, to kind of control this from the contacts. And then the last thing is, is that we're going to talk about drips that are consolidated versus staggered. So before I move over to the context view, I want to show you in a very basic like three SMS drip series yeah, like yeah. this, what it would mean for contacts that flow through this workflow to get consolidated or to be staggered. And so let's just think about this, okay? And so let's say that there's an example right now, it's 3.05 p.m. And so if I was to enter myself into this workflow right now at 3.05, and then let's say I entered myself again or a different you know, test contact at 3.10 p.m., 
then somebody would get the SMS at 305 and then the next person would get the SMS at 310 because they're going to get the SMS right after then they enter the workflow and they entered the workflows at different times. So they are staggered in that case. Now, if we wanted to consolidate them such that everybody that's going through this workflow gets funneled down into receiving the message at a specific time, there are ways that we can do that inside the wait events. And so we can refine down a little bit into a certain window by turning on advanced window here. And then let's say, you know, we don't want these to go out on Monday. We only want them to go out on Tuesday. And then let's say that we only want them to go out from 11 a.m., just say 11.30 to like 3 p.m. or something. 11.30 to 3.30. And so this would be an advanced window. And so this will sort of like semi, semi consolidate them. So we'll just put semi here. Right? because then that still gives us 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30. 30. So we have four hours in this window where the messages can get sent over that four hour window. We can also consolidate them all down to an exact time, in which case, instead of window down here, we would select exact, and then let's say we did 9 a.m. So we do exact time, and then this is full consolidation. And so we'll pass back around on this, but I just want you to understand the difference between a wait event. Like, let's say we had just a generic wait event up here that just said, wait seven days. That will give the system the ultimate flexibility to, they will just all hit this SMS whenever they, it'll be seven days after whenever they came in to the dot or we can semi-consolidate them in which there is still some variance and when they'll receive the message, but it's gonna be within the window specified in here, which we gave it a four hour window. Or we have full consolidation, which is where everything is consolidated down to an exact time of 9 a.m. And everybody that's at this wait event will get released to receive SMS three at 9 a.m. So let's leave this up and we're gonna open another tab and we'll go to the context view real quick. So if we go to contacts, we have a few test contacts in here. And let's say that we wanted to create a list of these contacts. So we can build lists in a few different ways. We can see that each of these contacts have this import tag, right? Import 036-2023. And so we can see here that this is the import that we had created. And we did that in another training video. But that is how if we were to, you can build all sorts of filters over here on the right-hand side that show you a subset of your contacts. So if we wanted to build a filter here that said tag is and then we could type import and apply that tag. And that's gonna show us the three contacts that have that tag, import 0306, 2023. And we could actually save this as a separate filter up here so we can always get back to it. But if we wanted to create a drip using these contacts that we just filtered for, we can select all of the contacts like this and then we can click on this little robot icon, which is going to be add to campaign slash workflow. And then we can click proceed. And we had created this test workflow, which is our drip. And I think this is actually one that we had created in the previous in a previous training, which is fine, no problem. But the important thing is no matter what workflow you select, you're going to drip them into a workflow. And so what you can do here is you can do add and drip mode. 
which will sort of simulate simulate like a real life scenario where not everybody typically enters a workflow at the same time. It typically happens over the course of a period of time and in little bits at a time. And so you're going to add like the name of this. This is called a bulk action. So this is going to run in the system and depending on how many contacts it might be running for a while. So let's say we wanted to start this like on Tuesday at let's just say 1 p.m. And let's say instead of three contacts, we had 2,000, 5,000 contacts. So let's say we had 5,000 contacts. And so we wanted everybody to be with into this workflow within, let's say, a week. And so ultimately, if we're talking about a work week, five days, that means we need to do 1,000 per day. And so over the course of an eight-hour day or so, let's just give ourselves like six hours let's say five hours does that makes it easy because then we can do a batch quantity of basically 200 and we're going to repeat every one hour and we're going to only process it not on saturday and sunday and we're only going to process it between let's say like 8 a.m and 8 p.m So Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., we have 5,000 contacts that we need to push through. So we're going to do 200 per hour. So 200 people per hour are going to be added in that workflow. Now, that does mean that 200 people are all going to be added at the exact same time. So that's still a lot of people to like enter a workflow at the exact same time. And so you could add even more variants if you wanted to. And you could do you know, 100 every 30 minutes or something like that and break it up even more. The And the lower that you can get it, so let's say we can actually even trick this up more and do 50 every 15 minutes. And that would likely be a kind of a perfect drip setup there. Now they are going to then drip into the workflow and this brings me back to the last point here which is the impact to the team when it's consolidated versus not consolidated. So thankfully, when you use this drip feature inside the contacts view for a, you know, a bulk import into a workflow, it's going to help to add them into the workflow at different periods of time so that they're not all hitting the workflow at the same time because you could add a whole list of 5,000 people straight to the workflow. And I've seen people do that multiple times. But it's typically better to let a drip like this run where they're being sprinkled into the workflow. Now, why? Why is that the case? A couple of different reasons. When we say impact to the team, we can also talk about impact to the system. So here we have impact to the team when drips are staggered versus consolidated. So when they are staggered, some of the benefit of that is, first of all, your SMTP server is not going to freak out on the email side because if you, let's say, average like you know, 20 or 30 emails a day, or even 100 emails a day, or even a thousand emails a day, which would be high. But let's say that you were on the top end of that spectrum. And then all of a sudden, one day you do a blast with 5,000 contacts. The SMTP server typically, um, like a mail gun, for example, does not typically respond to major um, fluctuations like that very well. And Sometimes Twilio can also cause problems on the SMS side of things. And so it's better to do it in small chunks because it's easier on the system. For one, things don't get clogged up. You don't have to worry as much about getting caught by a spam filter or something like that on the email client side of things. And that's on the system side of things. But there's also the team side of things, which is if this typically drip workflows are soliciting for some kind of response. And so you have to imagine that either you or, you know, your client or the end business owner is going to be sitting on the other side of that receiving end, um, waiting for them, to, for the customer to reply to the messages that you're dripping out. So if you send out 5,000 messages at the same time, that creates a lot of potential for a huge influx in replies that somebody is going to have to manage. So it's better normally to amortize those replies over a period of time so, so that it's more consistent 
and less like massively grouped in one period of time so that you don't have to worry about taking forever to respond to people and all that kind of stuff. So there are advantages though to using a time window like this, like an exact time window, which is, you know, there's a lot of people in the marketing space that are testing different times of day. When are people most available? All that type of stuff. And so if you have a workflow that has like um, a lower volume or you have a team that can handle, you know, 5,000 replies coming in at 9 a.m. Obviously, it's not going to be the full 5,000, but let's say a lot of replies at 9 a.m. Then, you know, you might have benefit from actually consolidating a lot of those replies. And sometimes let's say that you have a certain time window where you're going to have people that are able to respond to messages. Like some businesses will tell you, yeah, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., like we have people there, they're going to be responding. And then after that, we're in the field. Okay, so we want to try to get less responses to come in when they're not available so we can consolidate around those times. And so even if you drip people into a workflow using this tool, if you have weight events in the workflow that are causing consolidation like this, then eventually everybody will, even if they were dripped in the workflow at different times, they will end up consolidating and rolling up to um, an exact time. And so I've had people you know, have that happen where they're like, oh, it sounds great to go out at 9 a.m., but then they start getting like massive amounts of replies at 9 a.m. and they can't handle the volume. And they're like, what happens? You know, they're all coming at the same time. I'm like, well, yeah, it's because we're sending that message out at 9 a.m. So, anywho, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Little video on drip. Let me know if you have any questions. Zach Gilland, over and out. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Want to learn Go High Level in a structured format? Check out the GHLacademy.com by Extendly. We guarantee to save you six months of wasted subscription costs for high level. Just visit the GHLacademy.com.